My name is Christopher Toussaint, and I'm at the third annual New Age Music Conference in Santa Monica, California. With me tonight is a gentleman who has been producing New Age music, playing New Age music, performing live and recording numerous albums. His name is Yasus, and he's also produced music videos as well. And last year he was awarded the Crystal Award. This year he presented the Crystal Award, and we have him now to speak about his music and also about the phenomenon of New Age music in this country and about uh, all sorts of different things that, that may relate, may not relate, may take us into the outer dimensions where his music often probes. Well, Thank you, Chris. I'm happy to be here. Your music is very ethereal. I think that is the one word which I would describe it by. So far. <laughs> So, I, I just finished an album, which is Tropical Dance Music, which is the exact opposite of Ethereal. Uh -huh. But that's what I'm known for, what you're saying is yeah. what I'm known for, yeah. The, uh, you, you probe the celestial realms, uh, you tweak the synthesizer to its extremes a lot of times. Thank you. And uh, a, lot of what, a lot of what you bring in is what I would term... Um, celestial, uh, angelic type of music, especially your early works, uh, yeah. such as Crystal Vista, my favorite, Angels of Comfort, mm -hmm. Angel Play, which brings into the natural world crickets and, and very soft types of things. Since you're, you're always exploring the outer edges, what, what, what actually got you into this and, and starting to do that many years ago? Okay. Um, to begin with, uh, I've played music since I was eight years old. Flute lessons, piano lessons, and I studied it in grade school, in high school. And then I had an experience later in my life where I spontaneously began hearing heavenly music in my mind. And I didn't know where it was coming from, but it was heavenly, totally beautiful, and extremely unlike anything I'd ever heard here on earth. I thought to myself, this is wonderful. If only I could create this, I know many people, not everybody, but many people would just go into a heavenly space with it. They're going to ecstasy with it. It's just so beautiful. But I thought, how? I don't know how to do this. This is so different. When I was hearing this, this was even before the era of synthesizers. They didn't even exist. But some voice inside my head said, you can do this. <laughs> I said, really? <laughs> yes, you can do this. Okay, so I trusted it. So I just went for it, I started working on it, and uh, in the beginning it wasn't very much like it, but then technology caught up with me to make it easier for me to manifest musical visions that came closer to the inner visions I was hearing in my mind. And then a few years later I had an experience where I became aware of a being from a higher dimension, a light being, that all this time had been intentionally transmitting these musical visions into my mind. And so uh, when I sensed them, it's like, it was like remembering him, it was like remembering we had agreed to work together even before I was born. It's like remembering the whole agreement, and it was wonderful because I felt tremendous love for him. And the purpose of this was to bring music here that would have a harmonizing effect and also a subtleizing, sensitizing effect because our plan is currently going through some transitions. And this music is designed to help subtleize people, sensitize them to these subtler frequencies that are now coming in. And also to have an aligning effect between the people's subtle bodies, their physical body, emotional, mental, etheric bodies, to line them up like a car getting a tune-up, so they work much better as a team. So that was the um, impetus behind this music coming into my mind, and then I did everything I could to manifest it, and progressively I got better at it because better equipment became available. Now, on my own, I've had experiences before this when listening to other people's music, there'd be times where I'd get glimpses where the music would just take me into very heavenly cosmic spaces, and I loved it, but it lasts only for a few seconds, and I thought, wouldn't it be wonderful if you could create music that could transport you to godlike spaces, heavenly spaces, spiritual spaces, and keep you there mm. for a sustained long period of time? And so that's been the underlying goal. And so I think a lot of my music as being a vibrational gateway to access higher dimensions. Music can, uh, people can listen to the music 
and it can function as a ticket, a bridge, a gateway in consciousness to help them connect with, go to, and stay at a higher level of life. And using music for that purpose has always been a, a big fascination for me. I'm very curious, uh, getting back to this entity that you know, hmm. came through yes. and, and started to make... How did he make his uh, appearance to you when you finally recognized, after several years, that indeed he was guiding you and, and there was a, a more profound mission involved? Um, and explaining that verbally, I'm not sure it would have that much uh, meaning to others, but basically I was doing some uh, automatic writing from different being. And then I sensed him up there. <laughs> and then when I sensed him and saw him, I recognized him and remembered him. And it released a tremendous flood of love for me to him, like a waterfall of love. And I loved him the way a younger brother would love an older brother. It was that kind of love. And then I remembered instantly the whole agreement we had made. And uh, I feel honored to be working with this being. Where, where is it going to take you? Where, where do you feel it's going to take you personally? My music? Well, um, the best way to answer that is to talk about what I've been working on for the last three and a half years and I've just completed, mm -hmm. which is an album of tropical dance music, mm -hmm. which is the last thing people would expect from me. Mm -hmm. Because what they know me for is the celestial space music. And rhythm is the opposite end of the spectrum. It's totally earthy, totally grounded. And I personally found it uh, extremely natural for me, something I wanted to do for a long time. And for many years, I was hearing this music in my mind, but I didn't have the equipment to do it right. And more recently, I did have the equipment to do it right. So I was doing it. Basically, the idea behind it is this. Most of the music that's danceable, I found to not be that emotionally harmonious or pure or clean. Mm. Mm -hmm. harmoniously, emotionally positive. And most of the stuff that was positive emotionally was not that danceable. So I figured what we need here is some music that's really, really danceable, but also makes people really want to move, really want to dance, and to do it in a way that's harmonious and happy. So I figured that's what I'm going to do. And I was working on it three and a half years, and I finished it. It's called Bore Bore 2000. And it does an interesting thing. Uh, you see, rhythm is an energy pump through time. Hmm. And if it's an efficient rhythm, it pumps a lot of energy. Now, if the tempo of the rhythm is in a range that people can vibrate to or resonate to, then you get a resonance between the sound and the body, and people call that dancing. Mm -hmm. It's an actual resonance that happens between the sound vibrations and the body. If it's within the tempo range that the body can vibrate to, and different types of bodies like different tempos, uh, heavy people, people with slow metabolism like slower tempos, People that are thin, small weight, or fast metabolism like faster rhythms. Mm -hmm. But if it's in a certain range, the body can vibrate to it. Now, if you do that, and simultaneously, the music is filled with really happy, harmonious emotions. Together, they induce body happiness. Mm -hmm. And that's what people are starting to get when I've been sharing it with people that I know, just to get their own reactions to it. And so I'm very excited about this, because this album, being rhythm, really triggers the bottom three chakras, the bottom three energy yeah. centers in a person's being. But because it's also emotionally harmonious, it has an aligning effect on the whole thing. And rhythm actually provides nourishment. The steady pulse, when systems phase lock with it, when they start vibrating with it, it can provide energy, mm -hmm. nourishment. In ancient cultures, people used music for working. Of course, uh, people sing a lot in Africa now when they do uh, tribal work, but in ancient cultures they used it even more like in ancient Egypt, they use it uh, when they were building temples, for example, mm -hmm. just to make the work of building more efficient, more effective. Mm -hmm. Did you happen to visit Bora Bora or listen to the music of the people there, uh, or did it just kind of spring up spontaneously? Uh, the music was in my mind before I went to Tahiti, but I did go to Tahiti, including Bora Bora, for uh, a month. And uh, the music is not just 
native to Tahiti. As a matter of fact, it is not an attempt to recreate Tahitian music. That's not what it is. Right. Although it is an attempt to capture the feeling of the tropics, my own interpretation, like an impressionistic painting mm -hmm. of the tropics as opposed to a photograph of the tropics, the tropics. And so it was an attempt to create that feeling. And, uh, that feeling of paradise? Yes, yes, exactly. And so the six dance pieces are very high energy dance pieces and the four tropical landscapes, just like Bora Bora and Huahini and Tahiti and Maria, are very laid back, mellow, relaxed. Mm -hmm. A wonderful compliment to the high energy dance thing. A lot of people do envision that part of the South Seas as like the heaven on earth, the paradise that we all long for. And sometimes, of course, they they save all their money and want to go to Hawaii, and then they get there and they find out it's been over commercialized, and they they get a little disillusioned. Do you think that? Maybe something of what you wanted to, to recreate was, was a, a unique type of feeling that would give people a sense of what paradise is about in oral terms? Well, there are many people who've gone to Tahiti and say, if there's a paradise on earth, this must be it. And uh, I'm going in I tend two to, weeks. I'm going really, I tend to think that way myself. Check out the island of Huahini as well. It's magical okay. at night. As a matter of fact, the title concept Bora Bora 2000 came from a friend of mine, a Tahitian friend, Tautu Tauteha, who lives there, and he says, Bora Bora Paradise. Mm. Have you ever had a problem with considering your music New Age, and, and what does that mean to you? Mm -hmm. Well, the definition of New Age has changed quite a bit. Mm. In 1975, I put out my first album, and Stephen Halpern also put out his first album. My friend Stephen and he and I, uh, I guess, began you could say this genre. Although we we're preceded by Paul Horn and Tony Scott, music and present meditation. And at that time, it meant uh, spiritual music, higher consciousness music. That was when people were getting interested in all types of new forms of yogi consciousness exercise, crystals, things like that. And this music came along with that. And then as it spread out, it became a genre of its own, and its meaning has gradually changed. Just as there is a demographic sector of our population that is really interested in the human potential movement, or self-improvement, or inner growth, mm -hmm. or spiritually evolving outside the parameters of traditional religions, likewise, that sector of the population has created its own style of art, visionary paintings, its own style of music, which has become New Age paintings, uh, excuse me, music, which has become New Age music. And so that's what it meant then. But nowadays, there's been such a merging between New Age music and mainstream music that the borders are blurring quite a bit. As a matter of fact, it's reached the point where the last two years, the term New Age has become a catch-all. If it doesn't fit any of the other categories, let's just call it New Age. If it's not classical, if it's not jazz, if it's not pop, if it's not heavy metal, let's just call it New Age. So it's uh, meaning now is much blurrier and wider spectrum than what it was when we first started. Now what about healing music and mm -hmm. transformational music? Mm -hmm. Well that's interesting. My goal in creating music has always been to create beauty. Mm. I never thought of it in terms of healing. I always thought of it in terms of beauty. I wanted to maximize beauty. My concerts are my attempt to give people a concentrated blast of beauty patterns in visuals as well as in music. And then afterwards, people would come up to me after the concert and they'd say, thanks for the healing. They'd say, that was wonderful healing. I got healed. Or I get letters from people who use my music. They say, so healing. Thank you. So this was an unexpected byproduct of my music. My focus is beauty. What I got as feedback from listeners was healing. And then I began to realize that if it's really beautiful by divine standards, then it's harmoniously integrated energy. And if it really is harmoniously integrated energy, then it has a harmonizing effect. If it has a harmonizing effect, it has an aligning effect on a person's body. Now, what's the basic concept of how uh, music can be used for music therapy or healing? A lot of people talk about it. Uh, very seldom do they talk about the actual mechanics of how it happens. Mm -hmm. The actual mechanics is this. 
Modern medicine knows that many diseases are psychosomatic. They're created by your thoughts and your feelings. Mm -hmm. If you're nervous a lot or worry a lot, you can get an ulcer, so things like that. They haven't realized yet that 100% of all diseases are psychosomatic. It's all created by your thoughts and your feelings. Now, music affects your emotions. Mm -hmm. Your emotions affect your thoughts. Your emotions and thoughts affect the state of well-being of health or ill health of your body. So if you have harmoniously organized music, that tends to, tends to induce harmonious emotions. The harmonious emotions tend to induce optimistic positive thoughts. Then both the optimistic positive thoughts and the harmonious emotion, emotions induce a healthy body. So that's the causality. Harmonious music creates harmonious feelings. Harmonious feelings and positive thoughts induce healthy body and aligned body, balance, center. So why isn't this thing taking over? What? Why do so many people still like listening to, to hard rock and other types of avant-garde music, mm -hmm. which is very jarring, and, and if we should say divine standards, mm -hmm. by divine standards, would be more jarring and, and uh, discordant. Okay, well, first of all, not everybody's listening to music for the sake of healing. Mm -hmm. They listen to it because that's what they want to hear. Mm -hmm. Musical taste is a function of emotional preferences. When a musician is selling his music, he's selling a set of emotions, a type of emotions. Uh, people like Led Zeppelin, for example, have a type of emotion they radiate, which has extreme feelings in it like that. Mm. Different types of music are offering to the public a different sets of emotions. When people say, I like this kind of music, what they're saying is, I like feeling the emotions that this music makes me feel. Now, different people have different emotional needs. If a person is angry, really, really angry, there's a good chance he's going to want angry music, and it's out there. Mm. It's popular, sells a lot, millions of dollars. But you don't mean they, they want it consciously? No, I'm saying what they select instinctively mm. will be music that reinforces where they're at. Angry people want angry music, sad people want melancholy music, Happy people want happy music. Spiritually oriented people want music with spiritual energy. It's all a function, uh, a function of picking music whose emotions fit the emotions you want to feel or you like feeling. Now, those that are attempting consciously to spiritually grow may realize, well, I'm too negative, I want to change it, I want to be more positive. But it's not easy. Now, it's not easy because Emotions boil down to habit patterns, emotional habits, and being habits, they don't change easily. However, you can use music to help reprogram your emotional habits. And when you do that, then you can change something that otherwise would be very difficult to change, which is your average emotional state. So a person that's uh, on the average grumpy might become more relaxed, more positive. And when that happens, it's easier to bloom spiritually because you're more balanced, there's less friction in your energy field. You know, it seems that there is are more people who are kicking habits, kicking addictions, being able to get cigarettes and other impurities out of their body and uh, take up more healthy lifestyles in terms of exercise and things like that. Um, is it inevitable that New Age music or what we call harmonizing music will continue throughout the 90s to uh, expand and reach more people on the planet? Uh, yes, I think it will expand for the simple reason that more and more of these souls on Earth are spiritually awakening. Having awakened, they become more discriminating, and also more sensitive to energy, more discriminating than what they wish to expose themselves to because music amounts to emotional programming, so they get more selective of how they want to emotionally program themselves. For example, to just randomly turn on a radio to any station and then just leave it on randomly is just allowing garbage into your energy field because you're just letting anything come in. But when they get selective about it, then they can be more conscious about it. So, on a planetary scale, more and more souls are spiritually waking up, spiritually getting more sensitive, more aware of the energy around them and how it's affecting them, 
And by becoming more aware, they're becoming more selective of using things that they consider good for them and staying away from things that they consider not good from the, for them, which is why health foods are selling as opposed to foods that have pesticides on them. Now, do you feel... Same thing with music. See? Exactly. Do you feel that um, because for so long your music appeared maybe or appealed maybe to people who were more meditatively inclined and people involved in the higher chakras that now to be more balanced and, and to reach your music out to other people, you're, you're uh, delving into a, a new form here with the dance music? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Uh, a lot of spiritual people tend to be top heavy with their chakras, mm. meaning they're giving a lot of attention to the upper energy centers very little attention to the lower ones. Rhythm, bad. Rhythm, unspiritual. Rhythm, not of God. You know, they think that. And other people who are without uh, hiding the fact, not interested in spirituality at all, love rhythm. You know, it makes them dance, makes them happy. It's fun. And rhythm activates the bottom energy centers. Now, the goal is to have all of your energy centers open, awake, and charged in a balanced way. So the rhythm activates the bottom ones, the spiritual music, especially with certain types of sounds like crystalline sounds, activates the upper chakras, and the goal is to have them all awake, all alive, all is functioning as one highly integrated system. And so having both helps create that balance. Now how do you do that instrument, how, instrumentally, with what types of instruments and what types of uh, frequencies and so forth? Well, that's a big, broad question. It's actually a pretty technical question. I use all kinds of instruments. Mm -hmm. I use acoustic instruments, analog instruments, digital instruments, samplers, all kinds of things. And so if I go into that in detail, it will not have much meaning to most of the viewers. Mm -hmm. uh, but basically, if I can just generalize rather than get technically specific, right. sure. percussion sounds activate the bottom chakras. Emotional type sounds like... Uh, Violins or harps activate the middle chakras. Power sounds like brass activates the throat center. And then crystalline sounds like high bell sounds, crystal sounds activates the upper chakras. Sounds like sitar activate the higher chakras. Mm -hmm. And so different types of tones tend to trigger different energy centers. And this varies from person to person, but there are certain generalizations that are true. So I wanted to ask you about the integration of visuals with your music and for that matter things that appeal to other senses like aromas uh, you've done that at concerts too yeah well i've always been very visually oriented as a matter of fact when i first started out i felt that i was more visually oriented than sound oriented i went through a phase in my life where i did a lot of composing by picking out nature pictures that really struck a chord with my soul that I love, that are beautiful, that really moved me. And I'd clip them in front of my piano, and I'd just keep staring at the picture, staring at it, staring at it, until I was there, until my consciousness projected to this, that scene to where that was more real than where the piano and my body were. The piano and my body were dreaming. Where I was in that picture was more real. When I was there, I would feel how it felt there. When I got the feeling, then I could squeeze that feeling into music, and then I'd come back and piano and compose what I was getting. So a lot of my compositions were translating visuals into music. And later when people hear my music, they say it triggers visuals in them. <laughs> so that completes the circle because it started off that way anyway. Now, music and visuals have complementary roles in terms of what they can do to raise consciousness. Mm -hmm. Music, not that it always does this or that it should do this, but it can do. One thing that it's capable of doing is generating divine emotions. One thing that visuals can do is generating divine thought forms. Now, when you marry them together, when you merge them together, so they work as a team, then you have a powerful synergy that's much more powerful than just twice, either of them by themselves. Which is why for many years I've been doing multimedia concerts, and then I had an opportunity to create a video, Crystal Vista, which is my own attempt to create visualizations to my music, and then more... Uh, Recently, my friend Ken Jenkins, my colleague Ken Jenkins, has released a video, Illumination, where um, I did two of the 
selection, the music for two of the selections, and Constance Tembi did uh, music for two of the selections. And Ken has further extended the art of abstract beauty blended with music. Now, Ken's goal is very similar to my own, which is very much to raise consciousness through beauty. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, he had an earlier video called Beauty. And so they have this incredible power when they work together on a common goal of raising consciousness. And Crystal Vista is an example, Illumination is an example, and I'm sure Ken will be doing more videos along those lines. Let me uh, ask you about the complementary to beauty, almost like the beauty and the beast. Mm -hmm. And that is the business side of having to go out and promote your works, having... <laughs> I wouldn't call that the fun. beast. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, that would offend a lot of businessmen. <laughs> businessmen are, uh, you know, beautiful people too. The archetype is that they're, you know, nasty and not spiritual and all that stuff. That's not necessarily so. That's an old archetype. It doesn't necessarily apply. Especially when you go to an event like here at the International New Year's Music Conference, you see many businessmen that are really, really nice people. And furthermore, it's wrong to think that the artists are the creative types and the businessmen are the uncreative ones. They're just doing business. You can be creative in any field. You can apply just as much creativity to marketing music as you can to creating music. So, I think a person has to be open to the fact that uh, you can be creative in any field, you can be spiritual in any field, you can approach it spiritually, and that in fact, wake up, there are many people marketing New Age music that are doing it with heart, that are doing it with an uplifting, positive intent for others, that are doing it because they want to spread good vibrations on the planet. Many of those people are here at this conference. That's great. What do you do in terms of... Um dealing with that aspect, because a lot of artists, you know, find the financial aspects mm -hmm. pretty boring or just yes. not only non-creative, uh -huh. but uh, not quite as beautiful as the act of creating and, and performing. Right. Well, for me, uh, you can be creative in both fields, although they do, like, access different aspects of my mind. I think of uh, creating music as being more of a left brain activity and dealing with business more of a right brain activity. And so I've simplified my life. When the sun is up, I deal with business. When the sun goes down, I work on music. <laughs> it makes it really simple. It's easier for me to think analog, to think intuitive, to think left brain when the sun goes down. Especially it's easier you mean after right, most right people... brain? Right, right brain? Is... Yes, yes, yeah. yes. After, especially easy after most people go to sleep, after 10 p.m. I do my best work between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. And so I take care of business, going to the bank, doing stuff like that while the sun is up. They say that the influence of the sun is to keep people grounded. Sure. So it's easier to do that kind of stuff then. And so I just automatically flip gears at sunset. It's really simple. And uh, through many years, I've been marketing my own music through my company, Interdimensional Music. I'm now uh, making a phase transition to having other larger companies market that, primarily because they're much more effective at it than I am. They are specialists in that field. I'm not an expert in that field, and there are experts that I trust. So I'm happy to turn over that to people that respect my music, want to get it out there, and are much more expert in that field than I am. Now you live up in what some people would consider very pristine and, and powerful center, Marin County. Yes. Uh, where is it exactly? In if, you, if you'd like to talk to us about Marin that. County is just north of San Francisco. As soon as you cross the Golden Gate Bridge from San Francisco, you're in Marin County. And it is a powerful vortex. Some people think of it as an island of light. It is definitely an area that attracts a lot of advanced souls. And my understanding is that different areas attract different types of beings depending on what they're currently working on. And Marin County seems to attract a lot of New Age artists by which I mean both musicians and visual artists, mm -hmm. and also other unusual media artists, electronic artists, a lot of uh, strange media. Now, none of that is by accident. My personal intuitive sense of what's going on is that Mount Tamalpais is a very powerful vortex. And what makes it so is that there's a deva, a diva from the elemental kingdom above Mount Tamalpais that charges Mount Tamalpais with a particular energy, and that attracts beings that thrive on that type of energy. And my personal sense of it is that the type of energy that the diva or the deva over Mount Tamalpais 
that he radiates is energy related to creativity in the arts related to uplifting consciousness. Now, it's no accident that uh, George Lucas, Lucasfilm, moved his entire organization from Los Angeles to Marin County. It's more comfortable, he likes it there, but also there's a lot of creative juice there. Gilbert Williams is there too. Yes, he was there. He's not there at the moment. He's in oh. Florida at the moment, okay. but he has spent a lot of time there. And there are many artists around that area, and they're coming. They're attracted there. If you look at any catalog of New Age music, and where do they live? A good majority of them probably are from Marin County. They're intuitively attracted there. There's a lot of creative juice there. Attracts spiritual people and creative people in fields that are creative related to spirituality. Mm -hmm. And so I love it. I think of my power spot as being my home and my studio, and I think of my studio as being a temple uh, where I gain interdimensional access and then do my best to use the equipment to bring that down on Earth. I love being in ruins, my home. Tell me more about your understanding of, of this and, and other Davis. And <laughs> How many hours do you have? Not, not too long, you, you know. For a layman, for, for somebody who maybe has heard the term but doesn't really know. <laughs> Okay, just a quick overview. This can only be quick. Yeah. It's a vast field. According to my understanding, there are three ranges of evolution functioning on this planet. The human kingdom, the angelic kingdom, and the elemental or nature kingdom. They have different functions and they work together. They're designed to work as a synergistic team. The elemental kingdom, which is fairies, devas, they work to create form. They're builders of form. The human kingdom is here to receive thought forms from their own higher self and then to externalize it. And the angelic kingdom is here to serve the emotional and spiritual needs of both humans and devas. They nourish them spiritually, they nourish them emotionally. Angels are radiators of spiritual essence. They're like batteries, they get charged with particular quality. They get sent someplace and then they just radiate it out. Now, angels can see devas and humans. Devas can see angels and humans. Humans usually don't see angels and devas. However, this planet is getting more sensitive. More and more humans are becoming sensitive to it. Becoming more sensitive to seeing them, seeing fairies, seeing angels. There's more talk about angels. Currently, there's a fad now where there's a lot of angel workshops. And it's not an accidental fad. Um, there is a intent, I believe, in divine will that the humanity on this planet become more conscious of both the angelic kingdom and the elemental kingdom because they've been working so lovingly, so selflessly to serve mankind, they've got no thanks, no acknowledgement, no gratitude and appreciation for mankind at all. And if only they would get that, they could work much better for us. And they're here to serve us. They love serving us. They just love doing it. And elementals come in all sizes, from the tiny ones, size of an electron, to ones that will caretake a blade of grass, bigger ones for a flower, bigger ones for a tree, bigger ones for a field, a meadow, bigger ones for a mountain range, till eventually it gets, you know, cosmic. Elemental beings for a planet, a solar system, etc. It just keeps going up. And do you have one for each of the arts, do you think? There are Like the beings, muses, for instance, the muses. I understand. Uh -huh. The <coughs> arts is such a large field that there are many beings related to the arts. In the angelic kingdom, there are many beings related to the arts in the elemental kingdom, and there are many humans also related to the arts. I would like to do a whole hour-long documentary on the healing aspects of meditational music. One interesting concept related to that is how this came about was I was at a place where a lady named Cassandra was channeling Saint Germain, who's an ascended master. Mm -hmm. And the topic for that evening was fairies. And after he talked a lot, uh, he was open to questions from the group. And I asked a question. I said, uh, St. Germain, do fairies like human music, or is it too slow motion for them? Hmm. And his response was, St. Germain said, fairies like people. And fairies especially like people that are in balance. And fairies have compassion for people that are trying to get in, in balance. Mm -hmm. So, fairies love music that was created by people that are in balance. Bottom line is, how 
healing the music is is simply a function of how much imbalance is the person or persons creating it. Bringing it through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that's the bottom line limit. The more imbalance the music creator is, the more healing the music will be. Without him even trying, just automatically. Mm -hmm. Beauty feeds the soul, and so God makes sure everybody gets well fed in that field. Oh, you're doing a lot in that area. Thank you. Wonderful work. Thank you.